So this is a hard question, but not competing, but collaborating. Yeah. If, okay, hypothetical. If I gave you an Oracle that was able to do some aspect of what you do and you could just collaborate with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What would that Oracle, what would you like that Oracle to be able to do? Would you like it to uh, maybe be a verifier, like check, Mm -hmm. do the code, like you're, yes, Uh, Professor Tao, this is the correct. This is a good. This is a pr- promising, fruitful direction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, or would you like it to uh, generate possible proofs, and then you see which one is the mm-hmm. right one? Um, or would you like it to maybe generate different representation, different, totally different ways of seeing this problem? Yeah, I think all of the above. Um, a, a lot of it is we don't know how to use these tools because, because it, it's a paradigm that it's, it's not. Um, yeah, we have not had in the past assistants that are competent enough to understand complex instructions mm-hmm. um, that can work at massive scale, but are also unreliable. <laughs> uh, like it's, it's an interesting, uh, a bit unreliable in subtle ways, whilst, we, whilst providing sufficiently good output. Um, it's an interesting combination. Um, you know, I mean, you have re- you have like graduate students that you work with who are kind of like this, but n- not at scale. Um, you know, and 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 we had previous software tools that um, can work at scale, but but very narrow. Um, so we have to figure out how to how to use. Um, I mean, um, so Tim Gower actually you mentioned he actually foresaw like in in two thousand, he was envisioning what mathematics would look like in in actually two and a half decades. <laughs> uh, and That's funny. Yeah, he, he wrote in his in his article uh, like a, a, a hypothetical conversation between a mathematical assistant of the future um, and himself, you know, he's trying to solve a problem and they would have, have a conversation that, he, that they, sometimes the human would, would propose an idea and the AI would would uh, evaluate it uh, and sometimes the AI would propose an idea um, and uh, and sometimes a competition was required and the AI would just go and say, okay, I've, I've checked the, the 100 cases needed here or um, uh, the first, uh, uh, you, you said this is true for all N, I've checked it for N up to 100 um, and it looks good so far or hang on, there's a problem at N equals 46. And so just a free-form conversation where you don't know in advance where things are going to go, but just based on, on I think ideas get proposed on both sides, calculations get proposed on both sides. I've had conversations with AI where I say, okay, let's, we're going to collaborate to, to solve this math problem. And it's a problem that I already know, know the solution to. So I, I try to prompt it. Okay, so here's the problem. I, I suggest using this tool. And then it'll find this, this lovely argument using a completely different tool, which eventually goes you know, into the weeds and say, no, 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 try using this. Okay, and it might start using this and then it'll go back to the, the tool that I wanted to do to, to before. Um, and like you have to keep railroading it um, onto the path you want. And I, I could eventually force it to give the proof I wanted. Um, but it was like herding cats. Um, mm-hmm. Like and the amount of personal effort I had to take to not just sort of prompt it, but also check its output because it like a lot of what it looked like is going to work. But I know there's a problem on line seventeen, and basically arguing with it, <laughs> um, like it was more exhausting than doing it uh, unassisted. So like it, but that's the current state of the art. I wonder if there's there's a phase shift that happens to where it's no longer feels like hurting cats and. Maybe you'll surprise us how quickly that comes. You know? I, I believe so. Um, so in formalization, I, I mentioned before that it takes ten times longer to formalize a proof than to write it by hand. With these modern AI tools, is uh, and also just better tooling. The, the, um, the lean um, um, developers are doing a great job adding more and more features and making it user friendly. It's going from nine to eight to seven. Okay, no big deal. But one day it will drop below one, um, and that's a phase shift. Because suddenly um, it makes sense when you write a paper to to write it in lean first uh, or through a conversation with AI who's generating lean um, on the fly with you. And it becomes natural for journals to accept, uh, you know, maybe they'll offer uh, expedite refereeing. You know, that, uh, if, if a paper has already been formalized in, in, in lean, um, they'll just ask the referee to comment on, on the significance of the results and how it connects to literature and not worry so much about the correctness. Um, because it, that's been certified. Um, papers are getting longer and longer in mathematics, and actually it's harder and harder to get good ref- refereeing for um, the, the really long ones, unless they're really important. Uh, it, it is actually an, an issue, which and the formalization is coming in at just the right time for this to be. And the easier and easier it gets because of the tooling and all the other factors, right. then you're going to see much more like math lib will grow right. potentially exponentially. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. A, it's a it's a it's a virtuous uh, cycle. Okay. I mean, one phase shift of this type that happened in the past was uh, the adoption of LaTeX. 
Mm-hmm. So, so LaTeX is this typesetting language that all mathematicians use now. So in the past, people used all kinds of word processors and typewriters and, and whatever. But at some point, LaTeX became easier to use than all other competitors. And that people would switch you know, within a few years. Like, like it was just a dramatic um, phase shift. It's a wild out there question, but what what year, how far away are we from a uh, AI system being a collaborator on a proof that wins the Fields Medal? <laughs> so that level. Okay. Um, well, it depends on the level of collaboration. I mean, no, like it deserves to be, to right. get the Fields Medal. Like, so okay. half and half. Already, like, I, I can imagine if it was a medal winning paper having some AI assistance in writing it, you know, uh, just, you know, like the autocomplete alone is already, I, I, I use it, like it speeds up my, my own writing. Um, um, like, you know, you, you, you can have a theorem and you have a proof and the proof has three cases. And I, I, I write down the proof of the first case and the autocomplete just suggests, oh, now, now here's how the proof of the second case could work. And like, it was exactly correct. That was great. Saved me like five, 10 minutes of, uh, of, of typing. But in that case, the AI system doesn't get the Fields Medal. No. Uh, <laughs> Are we talking 20 years, 50 years, 100 years? What do you think? Okay. Uh, so I, I gave a prediction in print, but so by 2026, which is now next year, um, th- there will be math collaborations you know, where the AI, so not fields metal winning, but but like actual research level math. Like, re- like published ideas that yeah. are in part um, generated by AI. Um, maybe not the ideas, but at least uh, some of the computations. Um, um, the verifications. Yeah, I mean, there, there has are, that already happened? Has it already happened? Yeah, there, there are there are problems that were solved uh, by a complicated process, converse, conversing with, with AI to propose things, and the human goes and tries it, and it, and the contract doesn't work. Uh, but the, the, if I propose a different idea, um, it, it's it's hard to disentangle exactly. Um, there are certainly math results which could only have been accomplished because there was a math, method, a human mathematician and an AI involved. Um, but uh, it's hard to sort of disentangle credit. Um, I mean, these tools, they, they do not uh, replicate all the skills needed to do mathematics, but they can replicate sort of some non-trivial percentage of them, you know, mm-hmm. 30, 40%. So they can fill in gaps. Um, you know, so uh, coding is, 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 a, is a good example. You know, so I, I, um, um, it's annoying for me to, to code in Python. I'm not, I'm not a native um, you know, professional um, programmer, um, but um, the, with AI, the, the the friction cost of, of doing it is is, is much reduced. Uh, so it, it fills in that gap for me. Um, it, AI is getting quite good at literature review. Um, I mean, there's still a problem with um, hallucinating, you know, the references that don't exist. Um, but this, I think, is a civil war problem. Uh, if you train in the right way and so forth, you can you can and um, and verify. Um, you know, using the internet, um, you, you know, you, um, you should in a few years get to the point where you you have a a lemma that you need, and uh, say, has anyone proven this lemma before? And it, it will do basically a fancy web search AI assistant and say, yeah, yeah, there are these six papers where something similar has happened, uh, and I mean, it'll, you can ask it right now, and it will give you six papers of which maybe one is, is legitimate and relevant, one exists but is not relevant, and four are hallucinated. Um, it has a non-zero success rate. Right now, but uh, it's there's so much garbage, uh, so much the signal to noise ratio is so poor that it's it's um, it's most helpful when you already somewhat know the literature, um, and you just need to be prompted to be reminded of a paper that was already subconsciously in your memory, or it's just helping you discover new you were not even aware of, but is the correct citation. Yeah, that's. Yeah, that it can sometimes do, but but when it does, it's it's buried in in a list of options for which the other that are bad. Yeah, I mean, it, being able to automatically generate a r- related work section that is correct. Yeah, that's actually a beautiful thing that might be another phase shift because it assigns credit correctly. Yeah, it yeah. does. It breaks you out of the silos of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, thought, I mean, you know. Yeah, no, but it, it, there's a big hump to overcome right now. I mean, it, it's it's like self-driving cars. Right. You know, it, it, the safety margin has to be really high. Yeah. For it to be um, uh, to be feasible, so yeah, so there's a last mile problem um, with a lot, a lot of AI applications um, that uh, you know they can develop tools that work twenty percent, eighty percent of the time, but it's still not good enough, um, and in fact, even worse than good in some ways. I mean, another way of asking the Fields Metal question is, what year do you think 
you'll wake up and be like real surprised. You read the headline, the news or something happened that AI did, like, you know, real breakthrough, something. It doesn't, you know, like feels metal, it even hypothesis. It could be like really just this alpha zero moment would go, that right, kind of thing. Right, right. Um... Yeah, this uh, this decade, I can I can see it like making a conjecture between two unrelated two two things that people thought was unrelated. Oh, interesting! Generating a conjecture that's a beautiful conjecture. Yeah, and and actually has a real chance of being correct and and, and meaningful. And, um, because that's actually kind of doable, I suppose. But the word of the data is, it's, yeah, uh, yeah. No, that would be well, truly amazing. Yeah. Um, <laughs> The current models struggle a lot. I mean, so um, a version of this is, um, I mean, the, the physicists have a dream of getting the AIs to discover new, new laws of physics. Um, uh, you know, a, the, the dream is you just feed it all this data, okay? Uh, uh, and and it's just a, here, here's a new pattern that we didn't see before. But it actually even struggles, the current state of the art even struggles to discover old laws of physics um, from the data. I mean, uh, or if it does, uh, there's a big concern of contamination that, that it did it only because it's like somewhere in this training data, it already somehow knew, um, you know, Boyle's law or whatever law that you're trying to, to, to reconstruct. Um, part of it is that we, we don't have the right type of training data for this. Um, yeah, so for laws of physics, like we, we don't have like a million different universes with a million different laws of nature. <laughs> um, and um, like, a lot of what we're missing in math is actually the negative space of, so we have published things of things that people have been able to prove um, and conjectures that ended up being verified um, or maybe counter examples produced, but um, we don't have data on, on things that were proposed and they're kind of a good thing to try, but then people quickly realized that it was the wrong conjecture and then they, they, they said, oh, but we, uh, we should actually change um, our claim to modify it in, in this way to actually make it more plausible. Um, there's, this, there's a trial and error process which is a real integral part of human mathematical discovery, which we don't record because it's embarrassing. Uh, we make mistakes and, and we only like to publish our, our wins. Um, and uh, the AI has no access to this data to train on. Um, I sometimes joke that basically we have, the AI has to go through um, a, a grad school and actually you know, go to grad courses, do the assignments, go to office hours, make mistakes, um, get advice on how to correct the mistakes and learn from that.